Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav and I welcome you. In this video, I am discussing about MN98, Middle Discourses 98. This is with Vesetha or Vesetha Sutta. Uh, in this discourse, uh, the link to the discourse is given in the description. This course, discourse is where Buddha told what qualifies a person to be a Brahmin, who, how do one become a Brahmin. So, there were basically two Brahmin students, uh, one Vesetha, one Var, uh, Bhar, Bharduja. Uh, they were walking and they were discussing. They were both very learned. So they had this question they discussed between themselves. That how do you become a Brahmin? So Bharduja's views was that when a person is born well, when you are well born on both your mother's and father's side of pure descent with irrefutable and impeccable gene genealogy back to the seventh paternal generation. That means seven generations, right? Seventh pattern, till seventh paternal generation, all Brahmins. There is not even one sing single gap right it's all brahmin so impeccable genealogy that makes you brahmin however vasatha's views was when you are ethical and accomplished in do doing your duties then you are a brahmin so they said to each other that uh, we have a difference in opinion now we have the buddha who is in this place uh, in the same area that we are so and he is uh, having a very good reputation that he is a perfectly fully enlightened buddha accomplished in the knowledge and conduct holy over the world so let's go and check with him. So when they went up to the Buddha and they exchanged their greetings. So now Buddha, uh, it's like this particular discourse is, uh, uh, contains a lot of stanzas. So they asked the question in the form of stanzas that we are both authorized masters of the three Vedas. We are fully qualified uh, Vedic experts, but we have a dispute regarding genealogy. Bhardwaja says that one is a Brahmin due to birth, but I declare it be because of our actions. Because we are not able to settle the dispute, we have come to you. We ask this of Gautama, the I arisen in the world, is one a Brahmin due to birth or else because of actions? We don't know, please tell us. So then also re responded in form of the, uh, 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 like stanzas, stanzas only. So Buddha said, I shall explain to you accurately and in sequence. Now Buddha said that there are many, many species. Species are diverse, like uh, grass and trees. They are defined by birth. Bugs and moths. They are defined. So Buddha is saying all these lower species, they are defined by birth. Quadrupeds, long black snakes, fish, birds. Then, uh, so these are all defined by birth. But Buddha says while the differences between the species are defined by birth, differences between humans are not defined by birth. Right? Buddha said in individual human bodies, you can't find such distinctions as animals have. The distinction among humans are spoken of by convention. Convention means what they do, what they practice. So anyone who lives off a cat, cat, cattle know them as a farmer, not a Brahmin. Anyone who lives off the various professions know them as professionals. Anyone who lives off trade know them as trade, trader. Anyone who lives off serving others know, know him as employee. Anyone who lives off stealing know him as bandit. Archery know him as shoulder. So, soldier, anyone who lo lives of priesthood, know him as sacrificer. Anyone who taxes the village and nation, know him as ruler, not a Brahmin. Right? So we have to know them with their respective, what they do and, and they are not Brahmin. Now Buddha says, I don't call someone a Brahmin after the mother or womb they came from. If they still have attachments, they are just someone who says so. Having nothing, taking nothing, that's who I call a Brahmin. So Buddha is coming to this point that I call Brahmin as a person who is freed from attachments, all defilements. This is similar to the uh, uh, Buddha's description of an Arahant who has ended all defilements. Right? So in, in the uh, Buddha's teaching, there are four stages for weakening. Stream entry, once returner, non-returner and Arahant. Arahant is a person who has fully uh, finished all defilements. There is no more rebirth. Similar way Buddha is saying that person is a Brahmin only because when he is free from all defilements. Now, Buddha explains further, saying that having cut off all fetters, they have no anxiety. They have slipped their chains and are detached. That's who I call Brahmin. That means the person has cut all feather, fetters. They have no anxiety. They have slipped through the chains and are detached. That's how, who I call the Brahmin. Then Buddha says that they have cut the straps and harness, the reins and bridle, crossbar lifted, they are awakened. Those who are, I call the Brahmin. Abusing, killing, caging, they ensure, endure this without anger. 
like this goes back to Buddha's teaching that if someone is even murdering you with like a saw, they are cutting your limbs, then even then the anger should not arise, right? So it's like linking with that. Patience is their powerful army. That's who I call a Brahmin. Not irritable or stuck up, dutiful in precepts and observances, tamed, bearing their final body, that this body is their last. So they are just bearing this final body. That's how I call a Brahmin. Like a rain of a lotus leaf, like a mustard seed of the point of a pin, sensual pleasures slip off them. That means sensual pleasures cannot kind of grasp them. They slip off them. They understand for themselves the end of suffering in this life. With burden put down and detached, that's who I call a Brahmin. Deep in wisdom, intelligent, expert in what is the path. Mixing with neither householders nor the homeless. A migrant with no shelter, few in wishes. They've laid aside violence, so basically do not practice any kind of killing. They do not fight. They are totally extinguished among those who are armed. They've discarded greed and hate. The words that utter, they utter are sweet, informative and true. They do not sweet, steal anything. They have no hope. That means they do not have any desires left for this world or the next. They have no clinging. I'm just put, put, taking out the main main points. Pure as the spotless moon. Clear and undisturbed, they have ended the desire to be reborn. They have gone past this, got past this grueling swamp of delusion, transmigration, meditating in stillness, free of indecision. They have crossed over to the far shore. They are extinguished by not grasping. They have given up the sensual, five sensual stimulations. They have given up those sensual stimulations, gone forth from lay life. That means they have left their lay life and gone into homelessness. They have ended rebirth in the sensual realm. They have given up craving to be reborn. They have thrown off the human yoke. Giving up discontent and desire. They are cooled and free of attachments. They know the passing away and rebirth. So the three knowledges, right, which Buddha got uh, at the time of his enlightenment. That they know the passing away and rebirth on, of all beings. Nothing before, nothing after. Having nothing, taking nothing. Unstirred, washed unawakened they know their past lives right the, that this knowledge comes when a person is nearing enlightenment for a long time this misconception has produced those who don't understand this misconception that brahmins are born by birth so this is a misconception ignorant they declare that only a brahmin is by they declare the one is brahmin by birth you are not a brahmin by birth nor by a birth a non brahmin you are a brahmin by your deeds and by deeds a non-Brahmin. Deeds makes another stanza that I like is deeds make the world go on. Deeds make people go on. Right? So our deeds continue, lead to our country. It's very beautiful. Sentient beings are bound by deeds like a moving chariot's linchpin. By fervor and spiritual practice, by restraint and self-control, that's how to become a Brahmin. That is the Supreme Brahmin, accomplished in the three knowledges, right? peaceful and with rebirth ended. Know them Vasitta as Brahma and Sakka to the wise. And when Vasitta and Bhardava heard this, so they were totally, their doubts were got cleared, as if writing the overturn or revealing the hidden or pointing out the path to the lost or lighting a lamp in the dark so that people with clear eyes can see. Master Gautama has made the teaching clear. We go to refuge to Master Gautama and both of them became lay followers of the Gautama for the rest of their life. So this is basically what qualifies as a true Brahmin uh, who becomes a true Brahmin by his actions. right? So we have to be very careful of our actions and nothing is by birth. right? Do not like fall into this trap that by birth you are of a higher caste and lower caste. Buddha has also confirmed in many other discourses like there is this discourse that all Castes are equal, right? So it's basically our conduct that determines who we are, right? So I hope this was useful. Uh, do share your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And uh, uh, Namo Buddhaya, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddha.